one, one of the things that the enemy does is that he tells us repeatedly that what we do in our privacy has no consequence. What we do without anyone watching us has no consequence. So, and we believe that lie. That's why we have a public life and we have a private life. And oftentimes, our private life and our public lives, they don't match. Hear this. Hear this. What you do when no one is watching has consequences. In the life of a change agent. Remember that you are a spirit. Remember that God is a spirit. Remember that the enemy is also a spirit. So they see. They know where you are. Shall glory to Jesus. There's a book written by Philip Yancey. Google it if you can find it. The book is titled Disappointment with God. Disappointment with God. And in that book, he took her time to relate the tragedy of Solomon. Solomon, when he took over power, the kingdom of Israel, they were just barely surviving. Barely surviving. Then he used his wisdom and his ingenuity and improved upon the lot of Israel. By the time he was done with Israel, Israel was now a prosperous nation with structures, with commerce. Everything was booming. But guess what? Israel now looked like Egypt because he fell for the lust of the flesh. When he, when he died, the nation split into different parts. Yes, he succeeded in building a prosperous city but it looked like Egypt. Some of you, you, you may succeed building a big business but in the eyes of God, that business looks like Egypt. What men call success may not exactly be what God calls success one more time what you do in the privacy of your homes has consequences are you still here are you still here the, the third trap is the trap of position is the trap of what position proverbs 22 verse 1 even ministers, ministers fall victim well, every time of the loss of the flesh. You see a minister that he did a big program and people attended the program. You say, I must do the program. Meanwhile, God has not asked you to do the program. Sisters in church, you see a sister in church walking to church with a brand new uh, weave on or wear it, or wig, whatever it is they wear. And you lose your peace. You lose your peace. You say, I must have this. And because you say, I must have it, you will do anything possible to have it lost of the flesh you want to own everything you want to grab everything how much is enough all these are politicians that are stealing all they are stealing how much is enough how much is enough our young men that are doing all these rituals what for what for because they have seen a picture that they like. They've seen the, the, the rock stars driving the big cars, living large. And that's what they want. And once they want it, they don't care who gets hot in the process. Change agents, we are not like that. For change agents, the end does not, does not justify the means. Rather, the means justifies the end what you get is not as important as to how you get what you got pay attention I know most of you are not excited but I, I got to tell you the truth the next trap is the trap of position position the Bible tells us in Proverbs 22 verse 1 it says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Loving favor rather than silver and gold. A good name 
is rather to be chosen than great riches. Oftentimes, when we are standing on our mountain of influence, power can be intoxicated. Power can be intoxicated. And the need, the desire, the desperation to remain in office, to remain on top, can be so overwhelming that we start to go out of our ways to do things to retain position. Sacrifices to retain position. Killings to retain position. Manipulating, backbiting, dividing the brethren in order to retain position. Oftentimes, people start to see themselves do things that they didn't know they were capable of doing just to retain the position. Hear this. Every change agent must be willing to walk away from any position. Your life is not your position. Position is not your life. If you want to live as a change agent, you must be willing to walk away from any position. Instead of you going contrary to what God has asked you to do, walk away. And when it comes to position and power, the best way to secure position and power is to release it. You hear me? To do what? To release it. I am not really a fan of good Lord Jonathan. But how come they are not begging him to come back? Because he's in his mind, like what I'm not judging him, what he said, he said that his position and his desire to be president of Nigeria cannot be measured or equated to the price of the life of one Nigerian. Most of us, if we're in that position, what, what will we say? Anna, I will say, Moses here, this position I must what? I must maintain it. So, you see people who are in position and as a threat to their position, they will commit higher crimes to retain the position. So oftentimes leaders make terrible choices because they are fear they are afraid of losing their position for me I can walk away from here right now right now I won't look back if I will need to compromise my faith if I will need to compromise my integrity just to maintain my position here I will walk away now that is why as leaders, don't attach your life to your position. The reason why you cannot walk away is because of the things you have done to get it. And if you also know that you are bigger than your position, oh, a friend of mine, oh, well, he's one of my guys, when he left a church where he had been pastoring for 20 something years and he left almost empty hand he left empty handed the church didn't set, didn't do anything for him and he went and started a new work brand new work and i went to see him so he was, he was telling me see uh, after all i've labored i'm now starting afresh at this age i said oga you cannot start afresh. You cannot start afresh unless you did not work for God. If you work for God, you can't start afresh. He said, What do I mean? I said, If you are a manager in UBA, Abba, and God now transfers you, or UBA now transfers you to UBA Port Harcourt. Won't you go there as a manager? Huh? Your, your career continues from where you stop unless you were demoted. 
Are you still here? Now, if you understand that God owns everything and it's God that you're working for, instead of failing him, you walk away. And when you walk away, you continue in the service. I hear what I'm saying. Don't find yourself in any relationship you cannot walk away from. No man is your God. Once you start to see men as God, you start to become anti-God. You start to fight God without knowing it. One, one, of, one of the hallmarks of our faith is that nothing is permanent. We should be able to walk away from positions, from connections, from friendships, from relationships, once they start to go contrary to the will of God for our lives. And that man, that, that man I was telling you about, in three years, God has done for him in three years what he couldn't do in 15 years from where he was coming from. In three years. He has built something bigger than what he left behind in three years. Our problem is that God is not real to us. If you discover that God is real, you will take real decisions for him. Oh, pastor, I can't leave that man. He's the one that is paying my school fees. So because of school fees, he, won't not, he, he, he now wants to kill your destiny? Must you go to school to succeed? So going to school is now more important than your worship. 